Well, the coalition, I should say, has recovered electoral ground to draw level with Labor in the latest news poll on a two-party preferred basis. It's the first time since February. The figures published in the Australian newspaper show the two major parties deadlocked at 50-50. Support for Scott Morrison has taken a hit, though, dropping two points as preferred PM. Anthony Albanese's popularity has grown two points, sitting at 32. Joining me for more on this is Phil Curry, political editor at the Australian Financial Review. Hi, Tom. Interesting figures. Mm -hmm. um, look, the interesting part about this is, again, while it's 50-50 on the surface, I don't think anybody right now, if things were to roll out from here or there to be an election soon, would give Labor a serious shot at actually winning seats of forming government. Mm. Do you agree? Oh, I think if an election were held today, you know, you'd have to back... The coalition, but it's not going to be held today. So um, it's probably a year away or later this year. But um, there's a couple of things you take out of that poll. Uh, when the coalition fell behind Labor um, back in you know, a couple of months ago, that was largely, if not completely, because of its own. Uh, it was all self-inflicted. You know, it was around the Brittany Higgins time and and the Christian Porter stuff. So it was nothing sort of Labor did to get ahead of the government falling behind. So it sort of makes since that, as that sort of stuff's receded a bit in the memory, and we're back onto the, you know, the budget and the economy and stuff, they've come back. But, um, you know, the, the PM's been getting, you know, got a fair, fair, fair bath in Parliament last couple of weeks. Um, you know, Labor is certainly of this strategy over, over COVID. Uh, on, one, on one hand, it wants to keep you know, accountability mm. over vaccine and stuff, but the other bit is it's sort of about 30% sure he might go to an election later this year using his handling of COVID as a referendum. So they've pretty much carpet-bombed him, carpet bombed him in the last two weeks in Parliament. You know, they've even blamed him for the mouse plague last, last week. He's been blamed for you know, China running off the rails, the vaccine program, all that sort of stuff. So I, it, it, and, and it looks like it's resonated with people. Um, and what I understand, a lot of that news poll result comes out of Victoria, that slump in his personal preview comes out right. of Victoria. So, uh, you know, whatever they've done, whether it's right, wrong or correct or otherwise, it's got traction. One of the interesting things, and I know you're very keen on the outside Canberra test, so, you know, talking to the uh, everyday people mm. when you get down to the south coast and so on, I just find people do identify, you know, the nickname of ScoMo has worked mm. brilliantly in terms of everybody says it, but it almost seems to start off a conversation almost in a derisive or lacking of respect way, not the way other <laughs> Prime Ministers maybe were yeah, spoken well, about. I guess it depends. What, yeah, well, uh, it, it, it isn't a statesman-like sort of... Uh, no. Uh, maybe it, I mean maybe it works really well with some, and then you lose the states. Whether you like them or not, but it can easily become a pejorative if you don't like the guy. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, and yeah, you know, I think this sort of started with Kevin Rudd. To be honest, Kevin 07, we started referring to as, and and Rudd was the one who sort of depersonalised or, or demystified the office of prime minister. Just call me Kevin. This sort of wanting thing. to humanise rather yeah. than be authoritative. And that, that has a downside to it. Um, mm. the sort of the mystique or the statesman-like nature of the prime minister does, yeah. You know, used to count for something nowadays, you know, they're just all, you know, they want to be Joe Cool. Maybe I'm just jealous yeah. no-one calls me Tico. Uh, um, we do. Yeah. What about Victoria, though? <laughs> it's, it's an interesting debate that goes back and forth. We keep hearing about the New South Wales comparison and mm. the variant, the Delta variant, is actually out there right now. But they're all sort of linked. How long can they stay in lockdown? I, 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 it's I, a I, tough I, one. I, look, I'm not in Victoria, but I can't imagine people are going to tolerate an extension. Uh, I mean, as you said, nine of those 11 cases, they all know who they are. They're all linked. They're in, they're in quarantine. It's not like they're sort of breaking out at a Bunnings store somewhere they've not heard of. So Yeah, when, I, when I, local I, transmission is actually defined as someone in quarantine who's a cl like close yeah. contact, it almost feels like a deceptive it is, figure. It is, because, I mean, if you're locked in the same house, we've been touched... Yeah, the, but what we're saying is those people aren't a threat to anyone else. Yeah. Right? And, and, and it's no mystery as to why they've got it. Therefore, I think there's a good case to be made for, you know... Victorian government, you know, just back itself a bit and, and open up. You wouldn't imagine any other state extending on these numbers in, in these circumstances. And, I mean, you know, again, we're talking about Victoria. Why is it? It could only be mm. if they extend it, lack of confidence in their own, in their own procedures again. G7 tax move. Oh, so, yeah. up your interesting daughters. move from <laughs> Joe Biden, though, to sort of get on board with this. It mm. might cost American companies in the end or American revenue. Yeah. Um, is it significant? Going to see more cash, maybe to Australia, but no, because it's not just, just not going to happen. Won't happen. It, it, I mean, it, it's a very nice theory, <laughs> you know. And the, the whole world adopts a floor of fifteen percent company tax, so it's, it's basically stamps out tax havens. Uh, yeah, if everyone has a minimum of fifteen percent, then the, the theory is the multinationals will just pay what they should pay in the in the jurisdiction in which they make the money. Uh, look, Tom, we've been arguing since we had the G twenty in Brisbane back in the olden days about. 
just trying to, you know, streamline multinational tax laws and stuff like that. This was a Joe Hockey push originally. Oh, it was his, but a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of countries looked at mm. it through the OECD. And it just, look, it, it's a great theory, but we might as well talk about world peace as well. Maybe next week. Well, the federal government here couldn't get company tax rate down to 25%. Imagine if Morrison came out and Morrison said, let's go to 15. Senator to go, beauty, where do, we, where do we sign up? No hope. Phil Curry, on that note, thank you. Good on you.